பட் அகேன் மணல் மனம எவரு எவரு தொய்யா இருக்க மணல் மனம் ஒரு లేకపోతే మధ్య అందుకే మధ్యన ఐ విల్ గో టు కేర్ కుదిరినప్పుడల్లను సో అంటే కేసెస్ ఏదో చేద్దాం అని కాదు ఎట్ లీస్ట్ ఎట్ లీస్ట్ బ్రెయిన్ ఐడల్ గా ఉండకూడదని అంటే దట్స్ ది ఐడియా అప్లైస్ అన్ని వెరైటీస్ వస్తాయి మేడం అంటే వాల్యూమ్ ఎక్కువ గనక ఆటోమేటిక్ గా యా 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 ఎక్కువ చూస్తా ఉంటే బాగుంటది ఎప్పుడైనా అంటే ఇంకే బ్రాంచ్ కి ఇంత అదృష్టం ఉండదు కదా అన్ని చూసేవి అవును మేడం అది మాత్రం కరెక్ట్ అంటే మిగతా బ్రాంచెస్ ఉండదు జనరల్ మెడిసిన్ పీడియాట్రిక్ బట్ దే ఆర్ మోర్ ఆర్ లెస్ దే ఆర్ రిస్ట్రిక్టెడ్ ఇంత వెరైటీ చూసే అదృష్టం మనకే ఉంటుంది నాకు యాక్చువల్లీ జనరల్ సర్జరీ ఇష్టం మేడం చాలా ఇష్టం సో దానికంటే ఎక్కువ కేసులు చూసుకోని అనస్తేషియాలో జాని కావాలని అనస్తే జాయిన్ అయిన వాళ్ళు చాలా తక్కువ మంది ఉంటారు అరుదు మోకడి అయితే అంటే నాకు తెలీదు నేను అనస్తే జాయిన్ అయినప్పుడు నాకు ఎలాగుంటుందో అన్నది ఐ హ్యాడ్ నో క్లూ మా ఆయన చెప్పారు జాయిన్ అవ్వమని జాయిన్ అయిపోయిన అంతే తప్ప తర్వాత స్టార్టెడ్ ఇట్స్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ లైక్ అన్ అరేంజ్డ్ మ్యారేజ్ ఫర్ మీ విత్ గెటింగ్ టు నో అబౌట్ ద్రాంచ్ అండ్ లవింగ్ ఇట్ స్లోలీ అండ్ గ్రాడ్యువల్లీ అవును వన్స్ యూ గెట్ టు నో ఇట్ యూ వుడ్ నాట్ లైక్ టు తక్కువ బే ఇవన్నీ పక్కన పెట్టిన యూ వుడ్ నాట్ లైక్ టు లీవ్ యువర్ బ్రాంచ్ అవన్నీ పక్కకి వెళ్ళిపోతాయి it doesn't matter they are i'll just take 5 minutes 5 minutes break and come ma huh? okay, okay. thank you Vikram, all the best. Sir, thank you, sir. Five minutes, I think, I'll start. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Thank you. 
Good morning, Dr. Vikram. Srikram started one. Sir, start this at the master. Hmm, this is the. Hello, Vikram. श्रीकांत लेडा हम्म सर सर एंटर्स में सर श्रीकांत श्रीकांत लेडा हाँ श्रीकांत तेरे का ज्वाइन आवले सर फोन जब सर ओके
మోహన్ సార్ తను ఫైవ్ మినిట్స్ లో జాయిన్ అవుతాను సార్ జర్నీ లో ఉన్నాను సార్ స్టార్ట్ చేద్దాం అన్నాడా స్టార్ట్ చేసేద్దాం అన్నాను సార్ సరే అయితే చేసి you introduce you vikram and start yes, my name is dr vikram i am from jmr varlakshmi care hospital good morning everyone today our topic of discussion is anesthesia for craniotomy and brain tumor resection coming to introduction uh, anesthesia for neurosurgical procedures require uh, understanding of normal anatomy and physiology of the cns and we also have to keep in mind the changes that occur in response to the presence of space occupying lesions trauma or infection and uh, during maintenance uh, we have to maintain adequate uh, cerebral perfusion pressure and avoidance of uh, increase in the intracranial uh, pressure and we have to give balance anesthesia with smooth inter- induction and emergence uh, and there, there should be uh, we have to keep in mind the provision of optimal surgical conditions to the surgeon to avoid further progression of neurological insult Uh, coming to space after lesions intracranial masses may be congenital neoplastic infectious or any vascular uh, craniotomy is commonly undertaken for primary and metastatic neoplasms of the brain uh, the primary tumors uh, are glial or non glial primary tu- the glial tumors are astrocytoma ependymomas uh, glioblastoma multiformis uh, medulloblastomas and non glial tumors are craniopharyngomas uh, meningiomas schwannomas and lymphomas uh, and childhood tumors uh, they they cannot they can also be classified according to uh, primary secondary or benign or metastatic tumors uh, childhood tumors include medulloblastoma neuroblastoma or chordoma around 80% of the tumors are located in the supradentorial compartment and 20% in the posterior fossa the signs and symptoms of the uh, 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 cerebral tumors are regardless of the cause the extra intracranial masses present according to the growth rate location and icp slowly growing masses like chordomas and pituitary pituitary adenomas are asymptomatic for long periods where whereas rapidly growing tumors like glioblastoma multiforme they present acutely and are very invasive the common presentations include headache seizures and a general decline in the cognitive and specific neurological uh, abilities neurological functions and focal neurological deficits Uh, supradentorial masses typically present as seizures hemiplegia or aphasia infradentorial masses are more commonly present as cerebellar dysfunctions uh, dysfunction presenting as ataxia and nystagmus and dysarthria or they can also present as brain stem compression uh, like cranial nerve palsy altered consciousness or abnormal respiration as the intracranial pressure increases the signs of intracranial hypertension also develops Uh, coming to the pathophysiological considerations that we anesthesiologists should keep in mind are control of intracranial pressure and brain relaxation uh, intracranial space can be divided into four components the cellular component the fluid component and the csf component and the blood component the cellular component include the mass lesion itself or uh, neurons glia tumors blood collections the fluid compartment is the intracellular and interstitial compartment the csf compartment is the csf and blood compartment uh, compartment cellular compartment is in the hands of the surgeon uh, he involves in the resection of the tumor and all the fluid compartment is uh, also depending on the tumor the fluid compartment will be there the fluid compartment uh, can be changed according to uh, change uh, by the anesthesiologist uh, csf compartment can be uh, uh, can be managed by keeping drains csf uh, lumbar drains or any or in the uh, intraventricular drains the blood component uh, is maintained with the cerebral blood volume or uh, maintain the cerebral uh, perfusion pressures uh, coming to uh, intracranial pressure these four compartments will determine the fate of the intracranial pressure any increase in the blood volume like uh, 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 due to vasodilators or seizures or some anesthetic anesthetics like uh, like ketamine or uh, uh, any increase in the pso2 or decrease in the pao2 or any increase in the jugular venous pressure due to increase in the airway or intrathoracic pressure can lead to increase in the blood volume uh, in cellular compartment uh, any mass lesions like tumor or hematoma can lead to increase in the uh, intracranial volume which leads to increase in the intracranial pressure and ultimately it, uh, it is not it is left untreated and it leads to herniation or decrease in the perfusion pressure which ultimately leads to mechanical injury or ischemia uh, and this uh, in, t- in turn leads to edema and it Uh, it will be uh, it will start a vicious cycle of uh, increase in intracranial pressure and neurological injury 
the natural mechanisms such as displacement of intracranial blood volume and cerebrospinal fluid uh, and increased resorption of uh, reabsorption of csf tend to limit the increase in the icp as the tumor increases in size as these mechanisms are exhausted the icp increases steeply such steep increase in the icp leads to rapid neurological deterioration this uh, diagram represents the intracerebral compliance uh, as the intracranial volume increases up to a certain point the intracranial pressure remains the same due to compensatory mechanisms going uh, compensatory mechanisms working the horizontal portion of the curve indicates that there is some amount of compensation in case of an expanding intracranial lesion the compensation is mostly display mostly by displacement of csf and venous blood from the intracranial to the extracranial spaces once compensation is exhausted even small increments in the even small increments in the vol in the volume can result in large in large incre increases in the icp which may ultimately leading uh, leads to uh, herniation or decrease in cerebral perfusion pressure leading to ischemia the important consequence of raised icp are cerebral ischemia as discussed and brain shift if the icp exceeds 30 mm of mercury uh, cerebral blood flow progressively decreases and the vicious circle is established significant gradients of icp within various compartments of intracranial cavity leads to herniation of brain structure the most common forms of herniation uh, are uh, subcalcian herniation uncle herniation through transtentorial root cerebral herniation or transcalvarial herniations uh, next is cerebral edema increase in the brain water content is can be produced by the several mechanisms it can be vasogenic most commonly due to disruption of blood brain barrier or loss of cerebral auto regulation which allows entry of plasma fluids into the brain uh, it, uh, the causes are mechanical trauma inflammatory lesions tumors hypertension and infarction it can be due to cytotoxic also following metabolic insults by hypoxemia or ischemia it results in failure of brain cells to actively actively extrude sodium and progressive cellular swelling the various clinical indicators of increased icp include headache nausea vomiting hypertension bradycardia blurred vision somnolence and papillary edema are also present with cerebral edema also late signs are deteriorating uh, gcs cushing's reflex dilated pupils decorticate followed by decelerated uh, posturing and coma so suggestive findings of ct include midline shift obliteration of basal systems loss of sulci ventricular replacement and edema edema appears on ct as a region of hypodensity the basal systems appear on ct as a black fluid or halo around the upper end of the brain stem uh, here we can see the we can see the basal system uh, in the normal brain the basal system can be visible here and here it, it is completely obliterated the space between the interpeduncular systems and uh, basal systems are not uh, visible the treatment of cerebral edema is directed at the underlying cause if it is uh, due to uh, any uh, tumor then the resection of the tumor is the uh, ultimate ultimate uh, treatment for cerebral edema metabolic disturbances are correct, corrected and operative intervention undertaken whenever possible vasogenic edema <coughs> is most commonly due to tumors and it responds to steroids a single 10 mg dose can significantly increase the blood glucose concentrations in non diabetic patient after 10 mg dose uh, uh, the efficacy of steroids in uh, reducing uh, edema associated with tumors and radiation injury is well confirmed but the edema associated with any other intracranial uh, uh, pathology cannot be treated with uh, dexamethasone or any uh, steroids uh, and uh, if there is any acute intraop event and to reduce the cerebral edema if you use dexamethasone it will be too slow for the management of that uh, intraop event because uh, dexamethasone acts very slowly Uh, yeah, we should administer dexamethasone at least 48 hours before the elective surgical procedure then only it will have the potential to reduce the edema edema formation increase plasma glucose uh, uh, as we as we are using steroids there will ultimate uh, obviously the plasma glucose levels will be increasing and the cerebral ischemic insult uh, if there is an increasing plasma glucose there will be some amount of cerebral ischemic insult and it holds true for acute ischemic event in a previously normal brain but it should not be ex extrapolated to all the neuro patients because injury is a state of hyperglycolysis and subjecting the injured brain to the low concentration causes further metabolic stress so uh, miller miller recommends the intervention threshold is 250 mg per deciliter of sugar nice sugar study control group it ranges from it, it uh, tells that we have to maintain our sugar levels between 144 to 180 mg per deciliter and 153 is the reasonable target 
uh, after that fluid restriction use of osmotic agents and loop diuretic usually effective and temporarily decreases the edema uh, if all these measures are uh, not working hyperventilation is the final measure and the normal patients may tolerate uh, pseo2 up to 25 mm of mercury without ischemia but even moderate hyperventilation like pseo2 between 30 to 33 may aggravate ischemic ischemia in patients with focal ischemia <coughs> Uh, after that, uh, in intraop, we can use mannitol 0.5 to 1 1 gram per kg uh, to rapidly reduce the ICP. Uh, coming to anesthetic considerations during uh, intraop time. హలో కిరణ్ ఏమైంది సార్ చేస్తున్నా సార్ తను ఫోన్ చేస్తున్నాడు ఎందుకు వాయిస్ కట్ అయిన వచ్చి చేస్తున్నాడు ఇంటర్నెట్ ఏమో లింక్ ఆపరేటింగ్ కండిషన్ to maintain stable icp and to maintain stable hemodynamics oxygenation and ventilation parameters appropriate cpp while minimizing central metabolic rate to protect against ischemia early detection prompt management of intraop complications like venous air embolism and pneumocephalus in postural fossa surgeries intracranial bleed during central aneurysm rupture and uh, th- there should be controlled but rapid emergence to enable early assessment and monitoring of the neurological status the pre anesthetic evaluation uh, after a diagnosis of uh, cerebral tumor is confirmed the surgical plans are often uh, fast track which often leads to uh, limited time for the psychological preparation of the patient so we should address that uh, aspect uh, and we should uh, uh, appreciate the inherent anxiety in the patient population of this uh, uh, patient uh, patient population of cerebral uh, intracranial tumors along with routine aspects the pre op assessment should also establish the uh efficacy of medication for seizure control document existing neurological deficits and should quantify the use of steroids and the routine pre op assessment should be done of uh, airway uh, cardiovascular system respiratory system 
uh, investigations appropriate for age and general status of the patient and type of surgery should be done. Uh, the pre anesthetic evaluation should attempt to establish the presence or absence of any intracranial hypertension. Uh, there should be documentation of uh, mental status and uh, uh, signs of raised ICT or any existing any sensor existing sensory or motor dipsticks. Uh, CT scan and MRI should be done to review the evidence of brain uh, edema, ventricular size, or any midline shift greater than 0.3 centimeters. And we should observe any uh, respiratory efforts in terms of tachypnea, tachy labor breathing, or cane stroke pattern of breathing. And we should assess the presence of cough or gag reflex if bulbar moment, uh, involvement is suspected. Medication should be reviewed. And special reference to corticosteroids and diuretic and anticonvulsant therapy should be done. Uh, laboratory evaluation should rule out uh, corticosteroid induced hyperglycemia, hereditary disturbances due to diuretics, or any abnormalities in secretion of antidiuretic hormone. Anti-convulsant level should be measured, particularly when seizures are not well controlled. And based on the overall assessment, we should also identify the patient who would require post-op ventilation ICU, like patients uh, who have uh, who, who started with GCS less than or equal to six, uh, and if there is any evidence of raised ICP, and if the tumor is large and deep seated, or if there is any presence of midline shift or any significant cerebral edema is there. Uh, coming to pre-medication. Uh, opioid premedication is often avoided because uh, it, uh, it will cause secondary hypercarbia and which leads to further increase in the intracranial pressure. For patients with normal intracranial pressure, benzodiazepines such as metazolam or dizepam may be given. Dexamethasone 10mg IV peroral followed by 10mg IV or peroral followed by 10mg 6 hourly is generally given 48 hours prior to surgery. Corticosteroids and anticonvulsants should be continued until the time of surgery and fast egg instructions should be given to the patient. Coming to monitoring, uh, standard ASA monitoring devices like uh, uh, blood uh, saturation, pulse, pulse, ox pulse oximetry, pulse rate, blood pressure, temperature monitoring should be done. Uh, direct intra-arterial BP monitoring and bladder cauterization also should be done. And the intra-arterial beat to beat monitoring serves as an important depth of anesthesia, mo anesthesia, depth of anesthesia monitor and early neurological injury warning system. Uh, surgical relief of increased ICP may be associated with sudden hypotension or uh, as brainstem compression is all, is relieved. So we should keep in mind, of, uh, we should uh, do beat to by beat, beat by beat uh, blood pressure monitoring. Entidal carbon dioxide measurements alone cannot be relied upon. And ABG monitorings are also necessary to closely regulate uh, PSEO2. CVP monitoring should be done for patients requiring uh, vasopressors. And uh, we should also keep uh, central vein, uh, right uh, right atrial catheter in case we are doing any posterior posa surgeries uh, which uh, which uh, has increased risk of venous air embolism and neuro neuromuscular function should be um, uh, monitored uh, and we should also monitor visual evoke potentials which may be useful in preventing optic nerve damage during resections of large pituitary tumors uh, the monitoring of air embolism includes uh, precordial doppler device uh, along with pseo2 or trans esophageal echocardiography uh, ETCO2, pulmonary artery pressure, and entidal nitro nitrogen monitoring also can be done. The brain monitoring includes EEG monitoring, evoke potentials, jugular venous bulb saturation, uh, transcranial Doppler, transcranial Doppler, brain tissue uh, uh, oxygen oxygen partial pressure, uh, in intracranial pressure uh, monitoring. Uh, management of patients with intracranial hypertension is greatly facilitated by monitoring ICP in the perioperative period. Uh, ventriculostomy or any subdural bout is commonly employed. It is usually placed by the neurosurgeon preoperatively under local anesthesia. Ventriculostomy has the added advantage of uh, removal of the CSF to decrease the ICP. Uh, electronic monitoring of ICT is possible uh, utilizing saline filled tubing with a pressure transducer. The transducer should be uh, zero to the same reference level as the arterial pressure transducer. Coming to induction. Uh, induction of anesthesia and tracheal intubation are very critical periods for patients with uh, compromised intracranial uh, elastance as the patient is already uh, elevated, uh, having elevated ICP. Uh, the intracranial elastance can be improved by osmotic diuresis uh, like using mannitol and 3% uh, NACL hypertonic saline uh, steroids or removal of CSM via ventriculostomy drain immediately prior to induction. Uh, smooth induction and intubation prevents increase in the ICP or decrease in the cerebral perfusion pressure and consequent herniation. Arterial hypotension during induction is also detrimental. 
uh, the technique we uh, normally we use is thiopental the thiopental or proper uh, with hyper with hyperventilation is a preferred technique uh, intravenous opioids like fentanyl uh, just prior to thiopental blunts the sympathetic response uh, esmolol short acting beta blocker 0.5 to 1 mg per kg is effective in preventing tachycardia Propofol also has the added benefit of very short recovery time and reduced cerebral blood flow. As measured by PET, uh, it is uh, more than seoflurane at equipotent con uh, concentrations. Substitution of vitaminate for thiopentone may provide greater protection against circulatory depression. If the patient is, uh, is also having any heart disease, uh, heart problems. Patients with reactive airways, uh, the combination of incremental dose of thiopentone and low dose of isoflurane with hyperventilation may be preferable. Uh, non depolarizing uh, uh, neuromuscular blocking agent is given to facilitate the ventilation and prevent uh, straining or coughing. Succinyl choline may increase ICP, particularly if intubation is admitted prior to the establishment of uh, deep thiopental anesthesia or hyperventilation. Uh, however, uh, still uh, it may be the great it may be a great choice for patient uh, having an increased risk of uh, uh, risk of aspiration or with a potentially difficult airway. Hypertension during induction. Uh, should be treated with esmolol or by deepening the anesthetic with additional thiopentone or propofol or by hyperventilation with low doses of uh, less than one mac of isoflurane. Potentially deleterious effect of cerebral bed volume and ICP uh, with the vasodilators such as nitroprusside, uh, NTG, cardiac calcium channel blocker should be generally be avoided until the dura is open. Transient hypotension should be generally be treated with incremental doses of vasopressin rather than intravenous fluids. Coming to pro position. Uh, uh, normally, the head is elevated 50 to 30 degrees to facilitate uh, venous and CSF dryness. Uh, a notable exception occurs with evacuation of the of a chronic subdural hemorrhage, after which patients are usually nursed flat to discourage reaccumulation of the fluid. All the pressure points should be padded, and they should, uh, it prevents pressure, and uh, we should prevent pressure and traction on nerves. Uh, the, they should be the, we should prevent any thromboembolic com, uh, complications by using compression devices uh, frontal temporal and parieto uh, occipital craniotomies are performed in the supine position and in prone position uh, used for surgeries involving spinal cord occipital lobe and, and craniosynostosis and posterior for the surgeries the final position commonly includes uh, neck neck flexion reverse strandlandberg uh, position and elevation of the legs this orientation serves to bring the surgical field to horizontal plane. Uh, avoid extreme flexion or rotation of the neck as it impedes uh, jugular venous drainage and it can increase ICP. Head is maintained flat in chronic subdural hemorrhage uh, to prevent this uh, reaccumulation. Prone position also can lead to retinal ischemia, blindness, uh, and microglossia. Uh, we should uh, secure the lines before draping and the recheck. Uh, we should also recheck the placement of placement of VG tube after positioning. During positioning, the tracheal tube should be well secured and all the breathing connections should be checked. A risk of unrecognized disconnection as the patient's airway is not easily accessible, it, it, uh, the high risk will be there. Head is often placed in Mayfield 3-point fixator. Additional dose of fentanyl before the pin is inserted uh, helps the patient, helps to prevent marked hypertension tachycardia in cases of intracranial hypertension. Uh, poor positioning can lead to problems during the case and we should have uh, uh, careful uh, attention. Prone position, uh, the retinal ischemia due to prone positioning can, uh, can be due to uh, compression of the cerebral uh, central retinal vessel, vessels. And it can also be due to uh, the postoperative visual blindness can also be due to ischemic opti uh, optic neuropathy. Uh, it is uh, this ischemic optic neuropathy has many causes. It can be due to low arterial pressure, low hem hematocrit, or uh, the, the procedure is very lengthy or uh, there, there is any large intravascular fluid administration, uh, we can see uh, postoperative visual loss uh, due to ischemic optic neuropathy. And for lumbar spine surgeries, care should be taken to avoid compression of uh, inferior vena cava because decreased venous return diverts the blood to epi epidural venous plexuses and uh, it leads to increased bleeding during the spine surgery. Uh, and in uh, uh, coming to maintenance, uh, anesthesia is usually maintained with nitrous oxide, opioid, and uh, neuromuscular blocking agent technique. 70% nitrous, 30% oxygen, and narcotics. Balanced anesthesia with volatile agent is uh, essential. Persistent hypertension requires the, requires the use of balanced anesthesia with 50 to 70% nitrous, muscle relaxant, volatile agent, usual isoflurane. 
uh, obviously less than one man it should be used and co fluorin gives smooth induction rapid uh, onset and offset of action in comparing in a study comparing desflurin isofluorin and co fluorin uh, at ep potent doses and normocapnia cbf and icp were greatest with desflurin and least with co fluorin so co fluorin should be the ideal choice during in induction and uh, isofluorin can be used during maintenance uh, co coming to nitrous oxide nitrous oxide often causes uh, cerebral vasodilatation increase uh, cerebral blood flow and increase icp uh, it will also contribute to the development of pneuma encephalocele uh, it should be av uh, avoided in patient with cerebral ischemia reduced intracranial compliance and surgery with significant risk of uh, venous air embolism uh, neuromuscular blocking blockade is recommended unless electromyography uh, unless electromyography is used to prevent straining bucking or movement analgesia is maintained with intermittent bolus or infusion of remifentanil increased anesthetics are required during stimulation periods like the laryngoscopy intubation skin incision dural opening periosteal man manipulations and closure icp icp should be reduced by administering na mannitol 0.5 to 1 gram per kg with or without furosemide 0.5 to 1 gram per kg uh, despite the vasodilatory potential of uh, nitrous oxide both nitrous oxide and volatile anesthetics in concentration less than mac can be used in most elective and many emergent neurosurgical procedures were administered as a part of the balanced anesthetic technique in combination with opioids in circumstances in which icp is persistently increased or surgical field is persistently tight nitrous oxide and volatile anesthetic should be replaced by iv anesthetics and if we use if uh, we are using combination of mannitol and furosemide there is a risk of uh, causing hypovolemia and electrolyte disturbances and uh, there are some instances where using mannitol Uh, can uh, has led to rebound swelling which is assumed to be due to accumulation of mannitol in cerebral uh, tissue the pao2 main 100 mm hg uh, and pso2 between 30 to 35 mm hg uh, avoid uh, we should avoid over ventilation since hypocarbia may result in cerebral vasoconstriction and reduce uh, cerebral perfusion uh, Uh, peep and ventilatory patterns resulting in high mean airway pressure should be should also be avoided because uh, peep increases the intrathoracic pressure and it will leads to decreased uh, uh, venous return and venous engorgement and increases central venous pressure hypoxic patients may require may require peep and uh, higher mean airway pressure in such patients the effect of peep and uh, on icp is uh, very coming to fluid management goals with respect to fluids in neurosurgery are to maintain normal volemia and to avoid reduction of asthma asthma larvae <laughs> normal volume means uh, we should maintain normal mean arterial pressure with more surgical neurosurgical techniques and, uh, some neurosurgical techniques required uh, uh, hypotension hy uh, hypotension to be done the mean uh, mean arterial pressure should not be decreased uh, less than uh, 40 to 50 mm of mercury Uh, uh, we should also avoid lowering the serum osmolarity uh, because lowering serum serum osmolarity results in the edema of normal and abnormal brain uh, hypo uh, dextrose containing solution should be avoided unless indicated uh, because it is hypoosmolar and causes fluid shift hyperosmolar hyperglycemia can cause impaired neurological recovery finger lactate is also hyperosmolar and can cause increased plasma glucose by lactate metabolism five percent saline is the preferred crystalloid but may yeah. cause hyperuricemic acidosis and large uh, hyperuricemic metabolic acidosis has the potential to confuse the diagnostic picture uh, during abc uh, setting of large volume fluid administration miller recommends to alternate liter by liter ringer lactate and 0.9 percent uh, normal saline and plasmolate also can be considered uh, folate solutions uh, should generally be used to restore the intravascular volume deficits whereas isotonic crystalline solutions are used for maintenance fluid requirements uh, intraop fluid replacement should be below calculated maintenance requirements ikram nu intlo unnava yes sir okay okay sir sir ante enna voice ikram voice ka sir vere vaalli bag kranti kumar di mute chesan right sir thank you intra fluid replacement should be below calculated maintenance requirements for patients with severe brain edema or increased uh, intracranial pressure neurosurgical procedures result in minimum distributive fluid losses generally but are often associated with occult blood losses 
uh, medical judgment should be used for making decisions on blood transfusion in situations requiring substantial volume administration in like uh, cases like multiple trauma in neurism rupture or uh, uh, during barbiturate coma combination of isotonic crystalloids and colloids may be appropriate uh, coming to temperature control uh, permissive uh, hypothermia of 33 33 to 35 degrees decreases the cmro2 and may increase the period of ischemia tolerated intraop for example in aneurysm surgery however due to any lack of demonstrated efficacy routine use is not advocated normal therapy therapy should, should be achieved before patient awakens to avoid shivering this markedly increases the outflow demand and uh, thromboembolic prophylaxis neurosurgical patients are at the risk of uh, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism Uh, but heparin should not be used because of uh, risk of bleeding in confined uh, active uh, cavity mechanical means uh, should be used like graduated gradu- compression stockings and intermittent uh, pneumatic uh, leg devices uh, coming to emergence like induction emergence should must be slow and controlled smooth emergence uh, that is uh, should be free of uh, coughing straining or any arterial hypertension because cough uh, increases the intrathoracic pressure and it, it is transmitted to both the arteries and veins uh, in during emergence from anesthesia or maintenance of stable blood pressure and icp without coughing and straining uh, extubation is important to allow for neurological examination of patients uh, uh, if normal criteria is met ex- we can extubate the patient and if high icp and it is not out of control patients who remain intubated should be sedated if agitation is a problem uh, the patient should not be allowed to cough through et tube because it may precipitate intracranial hemorrhage or worsen cerebral edema administration of vasoactive agents such as lebetalol esmolol bicardipin uh, have been used successfully to control the hypertension alpha 2 agonist dexmedetomidine has been shown to shown to provide provide good hemodynamic stability during intracranial tumor surgery attenuating the response to intubation and emergence uh, intravenous lidocaine 1.5 mg per kg or a small dose of propofol or thiopentone just before suctioning to suppress coughing prior to extubation may be given the increased use of remifentanil may be associated with more post operative hypertension uh, it is avoided with effective transitional analgesia as the skin is being closed attempts should be made to have the patient breathe spontaneously after after the head dressing is applied and full access to the patient is regained anesthetic gas are completely rec- uh, discontinued and the neuromuscular blocking agent is reversed according to miller the emergence should be timed to coincide, coincide with the conclusion of dressing rather than final suture early discontinuation of volatile agent with supplemental uh, supplementation of residual nitrous with propofol in terminal stages of craniotomy should be done the advantages of early versus delayed extubation is a subject of debate the potential benefits of early awakening are feasibility of early neurological examination and uh, low cost and early recovery uh, advantages of delaying the extubation by a few hours have been reported recently the potential benefits of delaying extubation are uh, reduced risk of hypoxemia better respiratory and hemodynamic control and lower incidence of uh, post op hematoma formation delayed awakening may be seen following opioid overdose or prolonged administration of volatile agent opioid overdosing is manifested by small pupils slow respiration naloxone can be given in these cases in 0.4 uh, 0.04 mg uh, increments in titrated manner most patients are taken to the intensive care unit post operatively for close monitoring uh the cause of delayed emergence in some cases can be due to unplanned uh uh not a frequent event after surgery of brain tumors so some of the potential causes can be delay uh, for delayed emergence are seizure intracranial hematoma uh, brain edema or swelling and uh, tension pneumocephalus and we should uh, we should uh, keep in keep an eye for all these things uh, hypothermia and metabolic acidosis and hyponatremia may also contribute to the delayed emergence uh, in pseo management Uh, regular neurological observation should be done any neurological deterioration should raise the deterioration should raise suspicion of intracerebral bleed, bleed or uh, uh, edema uh, uh, agent ct ct should be considered other aspects like hemodynamics should be closely monitored to maintain adequate central perfusion pressure electrolyte imbalance especially so- sodium is common after uh, neurosurgery so we, sh- we should uh, monitor uh, electrolyte electrolyte levels your not put should be monitored in cases of a pituitary uh, uh, adenoma re- resection because diabetes incidence is common after uh, pituitary tumor resection post operative pain uh, more than 50% craniotomy patients experience uh, post operative pain of moderate moderate or severe intensity 
Craniotomy pain generally is generally very less pain than uh, uh, less severe than the pain of extracranial surgeries. Uh, in long duration opioids are com most commonly used, uh, like meperidine 10 to 20 mg, hydromorphone uh, in children. Uh, in children, hydromorphone is used in children, morphine 2 to 4 mg per kg or 0 0.05 to 0 0.05 mg per kg in children can be used. Uh, when the patient is fully awake, you can shift the patient to patient controlled analgesia. Uh, commonly used opioids are uh, morphine, fentanyl, uh, pentazosin. Other alternatives like alfentanyl, methadone, buprenorphine, and tramadol. Uh, with tramadol, we have to be in caution because it can cause seizures and increase ICP. Uh, we can also uh, shift the patient to nurse administered intermittent analgesia with single analgesic doses uh, of uh, declofenac, or rofecoxib, codeine, or estaminophen. Uh, post operative nausea vomiting is very common after craniotomy despite the widespread use of dexamethasone. Uh, important cause, uh, most important cause of post operative nausea vomiting is post operative pain. Uh, Infratentorial surgery has a higher risk of post operative nausea vomiting than supratentorial surgery. Uh, awake craniotomy has lower risk than uh, general anesthesia. Uh, there is decreasing incidence with uh, propol anesthesia. Treatment or prevention of post operative nausea vomiting is uh, we can use ornancetron, uh, granicetron, dolacetron, or in refractive cases, refractory cases, we can use dexamethasone 4 to 10 mg combined with another anti emetic. Uh, non pharmacological prophylaxis like adequate hydration after fasting can be done. Coming to post op ventilatory support. Uh, Patients with poor pre-op neurological status often require post-op ventilatory support. Uh, and any uh, patients, uh, uh, any intraoperative events like uh, increased duration or uh, complex surgeries, any hemodynamic instability, or any complications like venous air embolism or pneumocephalus uh, in the intraop events can, uh, can lead to post-op ventilatory support. Uh, and if there is any lower cranial nerve dysfunction, our brain swelling is either marked during operation are expected to occur post-operatively and patients who have sustained multiple traumatic injuries often required uh, ventilative support. Uh, ICO management aims to achieve optimal cerebral perfusion. We have to maintain CP, uh, cerebral perfusion pressure at 60 to 70 millimeters of mercury and maintaining ICP at 20 to 25, uh, 25 uh, Hg of water. Maintain uh, mean arterial pressure by fluids or vasopressors. Uh, monitoring the cerebral blood flow by uh, any uh, any xeron enhanced CT scan or position positron emission tomography or Doppler probe or trans transcranial Doppler sonogram, uh, intracranial uh, pressure monitoring using fiber optic uh, parenchymal or intraventricular devices, uh, and uh, some external ventricular drainage uh, can also be used for intracranial pressure measurement as well as uh, remove uh, as well as uh, uh, taking out the uh, CS, CSF out. Uh, extraventricular drainage via an intraventricular catheter offers a gold standard for ICP measurement and immediate treatment of ICP elevations. Uh, measures to reduce the ICP or extra external ventricular drainage via an intraventricular catheter or uh, using hyperosmolar therapy with the mannitol or uh, uh, hypertonic saline concentrations and careful monitoring of urine output with aggressive replacement of this fluid loss is also re recommended to prevent hypotension associated with the use of mannitol. Uh, coming to hyperventilation, uh, uh, acceptable modality in the presence of impending herniation for short periods of time or in the presence of uh, elevated ICP, which is refractory to sedation, paralysis, uh, CSF drainage, or osmotic uh, diuresis. Uh, it do not work always to reduce the ICP and, and it can precipitate cerebral ischemia. And the reduction in PCO2 should not be more than 20 to 25 mm Hg, should not be uh, to the point more than 20 to 20, 22 to 25 millimeters of mercury in a previously normal cardiac patient. But uh, in injured brain, hyper, hyperventilation is potentially deleterious and it should not be overused. In ischemia, especially. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Yes, yes.
So one minute, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, Vikram. Carry on. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, Vikram, it's audible. Can you hear me, sir? Vikram, sir, audible? Yes, sir. Uh, hyperventilation is potentially uh, injured by in hyperventilation is potentially deleterious and should, it should not be overused. Uh, hyperventilation can result in ischemia, especially when the baseline uh, cerebral blood flow is low. And hyperventilation should not be an automatic component of any neuroanesthetic. And there should be an indication for its institution. Uh, the indication can be due to increased or uncertain intracranial pressure or to improve surgical field, surgical field conditions. Uh, cerebral metabol uh, coming to cerebral metabolic suppressant, uh, we can use barbiturate therapy. It is used as a third tier therapy for elevated ICP when other uh, more standard therapies have failed. Uh, uh, this diagram represents the effect of uh, hypercapnia. Uh, shows that effect of hypercapnia on CBF is not sustained with the onset of with the onset of hyperventilation. Uh, when we are hyperventilating. Uh, after 12 hours, the, the cerebral blood flow and the CSF, uh, CSF uh, pH uh, returns to normal. Even though we are hyperventilating for longer periods, the effect only sustains up to 10 to 12 hours. So uh, the, we should discourage the use of uh, hyperventilation for prolonged periods for like uh, two or two days or three days. Uh, normally in ICU, ICU, most of the patients will be in hyperventilation for two days like that. So even though we are giving hyperventilation for two days, uh, the effect of hyperventilation on the cerebral blood flow is only uh, is sustained only up to eight to twelve hours, because uh, cerebral uh, over hyperventilation may risk pulmonary barotrauma. And patient who have been hyperventilation for a sustained period, the restoration of PaCO2 from the values uh, in the vicinity of 25 mHg to the normal values should be accomplished very slowly. Uh, in fluid therapy, uh, it should be guided by clinical and laboratory assessment uh, and of volume status by invasive hemodynamic monitoring. And generally, 30 to 40 ml per kg per day maintenance fluid uh, is, uh, is sufficient. And we should avoid hypertonic and uh, dextrose containing fluids. And we should maintain serum osmolarity of uh, 290 to 320 milliosmolar per liter and optimum hemoglobin and hematocrit. And hematocrit of 30 to 35 percent and a hemoglobin of 10 milligram per deciliter are the current recommendations. Uh, in sedation and analgesia, uh, should be done to control ICP, to decrease cerebral metabolism, and to facilitate mechanical ventilation to provide amnesia. Uh, we can use morphine, medazolam, fentanyl, propofol. Uh, propofol has the risk of propofol infusion syndrome. Uh, syndrome. When the propofol use, is used in doses greater than 5 mg per kg per hour or for more than 48 hours, uh, it can present with hyperkalemia, hepatomegaly, lipidemia, metabolic acidosis, myocardial failure, and rhabdomyolysis. Uh, the neuromuscular blockade during post-op uh, should be PNS guided. Uh, it should be it is normally used to avoid coughing or bucking on tube uh, to synchronize ventilation to minimize increase in the ICP. But prolonged use can cause neuromyopathy, uh, so it should be should not be used for prolonged periods. Atracurium uh, infusion 0.4 to 0.6 milligram per kg per hour is not associated with any myopathy we can use, but uh, there is risk of histamine, uh, histamine release with the use of atracurium. So we should be uh, coming to nutrition and feeding. Uh, the energy requirement is very high in these patients. The early feeding should be instituted within 24 hours. Enteral feeding will cause lower incidence of hyperglycemia and protect against gastric ulceration. Uh, in some cases, total parental nutrition can be administered. Uh, strict uh, blood, blood sugar control should not be done. Uh, and gastric ulcer prophylaxis uh, is uh, required. Uh, in specific procedures like posterior for the surgeries, uh, 
the anatomy it lies between tentorium cerebelli and foramen magnum it contains cerebellum and brain stem and cranial nerves uh, 9 10 11 and 12 it also contains emissary veins uh, there are valveless veins that drain uh, external veins of skulls into dural venous sinuses the indications of posterior for surgeries are uh, resection or biopsy of tumors of glioma astrocytoma etc or uh, resection of any vascular lesions abscesses hematoma or congenital le- lesions the three main problems exist here in posterior for surgeries are unusual position- positioning uh, uh, normally the posterior for the tum- uh, tumors are uh, done in pe- with patient in sitting position uh, there is a potential potential for brain stem injury because uh, uh there is prolonged uh, track there can be pro- traction on the uh, brain stem traction on the cranial nerves and it, it can also have obstructive hydrocephalus because uh, uh after uh, prolonged surgeries and if you use nitrous oxide etc there is a risk of uh, pneumocephalus also uh, the special problems are uh, because the it is a very confined space and there is not much room for edema or bleeding which if uncontrolled it can cause phoning of foramen magnum the position can be prone or lateral or semi prone and sitting is rarely adopted the sitting position may complicate to venous air embolism pneumocephalus quadriplegia or macroglossia extreme care must be taken while turning the patient uh, we should avoid extreme neck flexion which may cause venous and lymphatic obstruction uh, which can lead to macroglossia and upper airway edema uh there can be called hypoperfusion uh, in the cervical area which results in quadriparesis especially in the elderly uh in hydrocephalus there is obstru- if the, there is uh, uh, any uh, there is obstruct- obstruction to csf flow at the aqueduct or fourth ventricle which le- it leads to hydrocephalus the brain stem injury uh, main motor and sensory pathways are in close proximity to the operative site so it can uh, uh, there can be irritation of uh, lower pons and upper medulla uh, there can be injury to the fifth nerve uh, which are, uh, fifth nerve near cerebellar pontine angle the cerebral uh, cerebral vascular system response may include bradycardia with hypotension or tachycardia with hypertension or bradycardia with hypertension and ventricular dysrhythmias uh, precipitous decrease in the heart rate often signifies brain stem ischemia and should be should be notified to the surgeon it results spontaneously when surgical retraction is removed Uh, atropine is uh, uh, required for severe bradyarrhythmias uh, injury can take the form of is- ischemia or infarction with the possibility of lower cranial nerve dysfunction and bulbar paresis the clinical sequel sequelae includes loss of airway reflexes which leads to aspiration uh, it necessitates the use of rails tube and post op apnea nitrous oxide should be avoided because it increases cerebral metabolic rate and cvf and it can uh, aggravate venous air embolism or pneumocephalus Uh, TUI is preferred uh, because uh, uh, inhalation anesthetics like nitrous and uh, should be avoided. Uh, in posterior for the surgeries, post-op ICU with mechanical ventilation is often indicated uh, uh, in patients with low GCS, and there is any evidence of airway edema or bulbar paresis, or the surgical resection is extensive and complicated, and if there are any intra-op complications. Uh, coming to airway craniotomy. Uh, awake craniotomy is gaining popularity worldwide it is used for excision of tumors uh, located in the functional cortex namely the motor strip speech areas and short term memory area intraop testing allows optimal tumor resection while preserving the functional tissue low cost minimal post op neuro dysfunction and early dis- uh, discharge are the advantages of awake craniotomy uh, the enthusiasm for awake craniotomy is such that it has even been suggested that it could become routine for supratentorial tumors irrespective of the functional cortex uh the procedure was well tolerated with reduced intensive care time and hospital uh, stay in the prospect in prospect to trials uh, and there are certain contraindications also for the awake craniotomy it, it is they are uh, patient refusal uh, the patient is having any communication difficulties confused or extreme anxiety the patient is obese or those with esophageal reflex and large vascular tumors uh, are uh, best excluded from the awake craniotomy cases before resection patients must undergo vada test and video telemetry vada test is done to localize the hemisphere that controls the speech or to confirm that there is bilateral representation for short term memory or both it involves selector- selectively anesthetizing the cerebral hemispheres usually by injection of sodium amytal into the carotid artery speech is an issue when the posterior lateral portions of the temporal lobe are involved and memory is the concern when the involvement is medial Uh, video telemetry is performed to localize the seizure focus and the use of uh, continuous eeg 
uh, anesthetic techniques patient must be explained uh, about the procedure and limitations of user hair movement uh, we should minimize patient comfort discomfort associated with pain uh, we should ensure patient responsiveness and compliance during evaluation uh, various techniques we use are sedation only or uh, awake asleep wake and asleep in sedation only technique local anesthesia, anesthesia combined with appropriate sedation and monitor anesthesia care uh, can be done it generally accepted technique is a propofol remifentanil combination uh, even dexmedetomidin uh, can also be used and it provides sedation and analgesia without any respiratory depression and it has been used also used as a sole agent as an adjunct or a rescue drug for awake tracheotomy uh, loading dose of 0.5 to 1 microgram per kg over 20 minutes uh, 10 to 15 minutes or 20 minutes is then followed by an infusion rate of 0.2 to 0.7 microgram per kg per hour depending on the level of sedation is required in awake in a sleep awake a sleep uh, uh, technique it is important to maintain airway and ventilatory control it makes the use of tiva with target controlled infusion of propofol and remifentanil uh, propofol is the most commonly used drug for, for both sedation and general anesthesia it provides titratable sedation and rapid smooth recovery and decreases the incidence of seizures and when stopped for awakening it minimizes interference with the electrocardiographic uh, readings controlled ventilation is maintained via lma or proseal infusion rates are adjusted in response to changes in the hemodynamics and surgical stimulation it can it is guided by bis uh, when tumor is exposed remifentanil infusion is reduced until spontaneous respiration uh, respiration resumes propofol infusion is stopped and lma removed as patient awakens background infusion of remifentanil 0.005 to 0.0 Uh, 0.01 microgram per kg per minute is used to provide additional analgesia during awake period when the tumor is resected and patient is uh, patient is reanesthetized and lma is inserted lma is superior to others because it minimizes the risk of popping and straining and subsequent vomiting during lighting of anesthesia control ventilation by lma obviates the problems of apnea and hypoventilation or airway obstruction thank you Good morning. What is Robin Hood effect? Good morning, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, Robin Hood effect is the uh, 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 the blood the blood uh, the blood flows from higher highly perfused areas to the lowly perfused areas. It is the steel phenomenon. St steel is not Robin Hood. Inverse steel is Robin. Hood. Inverse yes, inverse steel phenomenon, sir. What is the most sensitive test for reject air embolism? Uh, so Doppler, uh, Doppler, uh, uh, Doppler ultrasound, sir. Transesophageal echocardiography, which can detect as minimal as 0.02 ml per kg, whereas Doppler is can detect up to 0.05 ml per kg. During craniotomy, surgeon is dissecting the tumor. The heart rate suddenly drops to twenty per minute. What will you do? We should ask the surgeon to uh, uh, keep to decrease the traction on any nerves or, or any brain stem. Or uh, we should actually ask the surgeon to stop whatever he is doing, sir. After yes. that, we can administer uh, atropine, sir. Yes. what are the causes of delayed emergence if you rule out the anesthetic causes what are the causes of delayed emergence after craniotomy yes, uh if there is any uh, if the patient with uh, even in pre op also if the patient is having increased uh, icp and if there are any uh, 
uh, if the patient is having low gcs prior to the surgery itself or if the surgery is very complicated or surgery involved uh, uh, increased uh, uh, fluid administration or uh, there is any extensive uh, extensive uh, surgery extensive uh, surgery done, being done by surgeon then it it will cause delayed emergence and delayed recovery so what do you suspect what are the sus patient you have ruled out all the anesthetic causes yes, sir uh, patient can be due to decreased cerebral perfusion sir first most common cause of delayed emergency is cerebral edema followed yes, by surgical causes like hematoma you should also suspect yes, yes, nitrous oxide is not used commonly in higher centers yes, nowadays yes, they are using compressed air yes, because nitrous oxide has a volume expanding uh, properties what is faster kennedy syndrome okay. I, i don't know sir it is a frontal tumor causing ipsilateral oculomotor nerve damage and contralateral parietal nerve damage due to raised icp yes, sir hello dr vikran use a nice presentation thank you uh, normally i see praised icp how much you have to maintain 20 to 25 uh, about 25 there should be an, a, an intervention to decrease the raised icp now normal icp is the is uh, 15 uh, uh 7 to 15 mm of mercury man about 25 mm of mercury we should uh, we should uh, ask for ask for ask for interventions okay. what is the quickest method for, for reducing uh, icp so the quickest method is uh, uh point uh, we can use point five to 1 gram per kg manitol sir manitol infusions no hyperventilation a uh, vikran you are telling about hyperventilation you yes, want sir. to continue uh, hyperventilation uh, for uh, 12 to 14 hours or you want to uh, give hyperventilation just uh, at the time of raised icp uh, at the time of raised icp we can use hyperventilation madam but in some oh. cases uh, requiring hyperventilation for more than uh, for more than uh, uh, 12 12 to 14 hours more, for more than 12 hours even if you use hyperventilation uh, the the effect of hyperventilation on the uh, cerebral blood flow and uh, is uh, uh is not there man after 12 hours so that's why hyperventilation is not indicated yes, only whenever necessary that is raised icp or yes, just a fraction of 5 minutes or 10 minutes only you can hyperventilate and reduce yes, yes, and not continuously 12 hours and 10 hours not like this yes, so previously we do like this now is removed everything yes, our yes, target is 35 like this yes ma'am And the thirty thirty five, whenever necessary, only yes, raised ICP that time only. Yes, What is the dye used in contrast radiography of uh, cerebral brains? Sir, technetium, technetium ninety nine. Gadolinium. Gadolinium, sir. Yes, 
what is the meaning of eloquent cortex uh, eloquent cortex uh, this, the cortex in the in which the speech area is present sir only speech mm-hmm. motor and sensory also yes sir so so any tumor presenting nearer to the eloquent cortex it is surgeon should be very cautious yes sir in the what how you are suspecting the air embolism uh, the psa2 will suddenly drop to zero madam and uh, uh, the uh, the blood pressure and everything uh, the hypotension will be there madam and uh, in in chest there will be uh, 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 milvil milvil type of uh, uh, murmur will be there madam okay so you are suspecting air embolism so okay. immediately what are the measures you want to take uh, immediately uh, uh, i will ask the surgeon to uh, to close the any venous sinuses that are open and uh, i will ins- uh, previously if i have not inserted right at right atrial catheter i will insert it and i will uh, i will uh, ask i will change the position of the patient to the to left lateral man left lateral jurant's position madam and i will aspirate the fluid from the right atrium you will see the operator said it is normal sir ah yeah you tell yes, the sir. surgeon uh, keep the field uh, surgical field uh, with surgical uh, field. Yes, uh, but uh, i mean uh, but the god pieces you can keep like yes, this yes, before falling of etc o2 you can suspect air embolism if the if there is no bleeding on the periosteal flap yes, there will be less no bleeding yes, you also said that uh, posterior fossa tumors uh, commonest position is sitting nowadays yes, nobody is practicing nowadays, in sitting yes, it is yes, park sir. bench or modified lateral position yes, any questions from audience omkar chaitanya sharada what do you monitor while you giving manitol sir uh, i will monitor you and put sir for long time you did not put okay what are the uh, what are the hypotension hypotension sir lab find is what you will do uh, sodium sodium serum sodium levels yes serum sodium and serum osmolality yes, nice presentation vikram any you, input from seniors can i say a few words karan karan ha vijay hello hello shrikant nen ra shrikant yeah kaadu uh, nothing uh, like not related to the craniotomy and brain tumor stuff 
బేసికల్లీ ఈ అబ్బాయి జూనియర్ కదా రిలేటివ్లీ అట్లీస్ట్ మనకంటే సి ఫస్ట్ థింగ్ ఏంటంటే ఫర్ ఆల్ ద రిమైనింగ్ డిఎన్బి స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ హుయర్ ఫ్రెషర్స్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు టెల్ యూ ఈ టాపిక్ ఒక టాపిక్ ఇచ్చినప్పుడు ఐ థింక్ లైక్ యు విల్ ప్రిపేర్ అట్లీస్ట్ ఫర్ వన్ వీక్ ఆర్ ఫైవ్ డేస్ లైక్ దట్ కదా సి యూ కెనాట్ స్టఫ్ ఇన్ ఆల్ ద ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఇన్ వన్ అవర్ ఆఫ్ క్లాస్ ఓకే దట్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఫస్ట్ అండర్స్టాండ్ and any slide more than four lines will not go into the eyes of the person who is reading it more than four lines will not go in the stipulated time you turn the slide okay and ideal listening time for any class is 20 minutes the maximum we can tolerate is 30 minutes above 30 minutes it's like okay you are saying something they are hearing something half of the stuff goes away okay not about this class i'm just generally telling because in future you have to present in various forms you have to uh, present in conferences and all so for that i am just giving some tips or guidelines whatever uh, what i have uh, heard and uh, spoken over this last 10 years i'm telling you and uh, most important is don't be a news reader little bit be proactive in what you are saying trying to try to explain what you are saying in a way just like a bland reading of whatever slide you have kept the points they ha- you have kept just reading them will not be of any use because uh, we can download that uh, pdf once kiran kept in the group and we can also read that hope you understand so you have to be little bit more proactive in uh, helping to understand at least the key points or main points what you fill in that 30 40 minutes of class you what you tell or like 40 slides you have some import very important uh, 8 to 10 slides so those slides at least you have to be a bit more proactive in explaining them to the audience and uh, uh, these are the things just keep in mind when you uh, prepare the presentation or uh, come up for the next class but it's a very detailed one very educative and informative with a very good discussion post class but the thing is during the class i'm pretty sure that most of the people have not heard all the stuff what you have kept and uh, headings also uh, uh, you, uh, some slides uh, they were in capital letters and some slides they were like mix of capital and small it should not be like that so all the headings you have to either keep in caps or you keep in a regular uh, way those discrepancies should not be there and uh, so in some slides the points are coming down to almost like bottom it should not be like that it should not be clumsy so it should look very mean ideal uh, scenario will be a four line slide will be ideal for uh, watching and it's also easily uh, it gets into the brain of the audience so uh, this is it uh, just i want to tell this points to not only to you to all the juniors and others these are my inputs thank you ah uh, shrikant actually hmm. also dnb students course anetattu idi cheptam anamata okay sa question sarpothundi yeah yeah ante basically uh, like articles avi share cheyachu ppt lo it doesn't go actually ga brain lo kelladu definitely ga idi than first class okay than yeah yeah and 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 like early ga ite please stay the వెళ్తుంది కదా డిఎన్బి స్టూడెంట్స్ అందరికి ఉపయోగం ఉంటుంది కదా అనేటట్టు దీన్ని ఎలాబరేటెడ్ గానే పెట్టేస్తాం సో నెక్స్ట్ టైం యూ విల్ మెయింటైన్ మోర్ స్టాండర్డ్స్ సూపర్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఓంకార్ సార్ పేరేంటి విక్రమ్ పోస్ట్ ఆపరేటివ్ మానిటరింగ్ లోని లో రెస్పాన్స్ ఆఫ్ క్రేనియల్ నర్వ్స్ అని ఒక పెట్టారు అంటే అది ఎలా అసెస్ చేస్తారు పోస్ట్ ఆపరేటివ్ మానిటరింగ్ అక్కడ చూసాను చూడండి లో ఆర్ సమ్ డిక్రీజ్ ఇట్ రెస్పాన్స్ ఆఫ్ క్రేనియల్ నర్వ్స్ అని అక్కడ లైన్ చదివాను ఇక్కడ హౌ డూ యూ ఎస్ఎస్
సార్ వినిపిస్తుంది సార్ హలో హలో సార్ వినిపిస్తుంది సార్ చెప్పండి విక్రమ్ చెప్పండి సార్ అంటే టెన్ లెవెన్ ట్వెల్వ్ క్రీడ బల్బార్ పాలసీ అంటారు కదా సార్ బల్బార్ పాలసీ ఆయన డిసాట్రియా డిస్ఫేజియా ఇంకా కాఫ్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ సరిగ్గా లేకపోవడం అది వాటి వల్ల తెలుస్తుంది కదా సార్ న్యూ న్యూరో క్రీడల డిస్ఫంక్షన్ కాఫ్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ కి ఏ క్రీడల నర్స్ తో రిలేషన్ ఉంటది అండి అదే సార్ కాఫ్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ కాదు సార్ మిగతా డిసాట్రియా డిస్ఫేజియా అవి సార్ కాఫ్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ ఉండదు అవును ఆల్్రెడీ బ్రెయిన్ సర్జరీ పోస్ట్ ఎక్స్పెషన్ అన్ని అలాగ ఉంటాయి కదా ఎస్ సార్ ఆల్్రెడీ పేషెంట్ డ్రౌజీగా ఉంటాడు డెఫినెట్ గా మన కమెంట్స్ సరికి ఫాలో అవ్వడు ఐ ఐ మూమెంట్స్ వల్ల కొన్ని తెలుస్తాయి కదా ఐ మూమెంట్స్ మామూలుగా ఈ ఐఎస్మెంట్ ఇవన్నీ చేస్తాం పోస్ట్ ఎక్స్పెషన్ ఎలా అసెస్ చేస్తాం అంటే వేగస్ నర్వ్ ఇంజురీ అయితే పెర్సిస్టెంట్ గా టాకీ టాకీ ఎర్థింగ్స్ ఉంటాయి సార్ ఏదండి వేగస్ నర్వ్ సార్ ఓకే ఇంకా గ్యాగ్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ గ్యాగ్ రిఫ్లెక్స్ యూనిలేటరల్ గా ఒక సైడ్ టంగ్ టోన్ మజిల్ టోన్ తగ్గిపోద్ది సార్ మజిల్ టోన్ చెక్ చేసారండి ఎప్పుడైనా ఫస్ట్ ఇయర్ సార్ అంటే డిఎన్బి కంప్లీట్ అయిపోయింది సార్ ఇక్కడ నేను రీసెంట్ గా జాయిన్ అయ్యాను కిరణ్ ట్రైనింగ్ ఫస్ట్ ఇయర్ సార్ సార్ హలో కిరణ్ ట్రైనింగ్ ఫస్ట్ ఇయర్ అంటున్నాను ఓకే చలో థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫర్ ఆల్ ఇన్పుట్స్